Hello and welcome to the Do You Live Daily. My name is Ross Marone from the This Is Marketing Podcast and today I wanted to talk about bootstrap marketing. Now, for those of you that do not know what bootstrapping is, in startup worlds uh, where I'm part of the Foodie Crave startup, a lot of what we do is bootstrapping, which means we're doing it ourselves. So if you're bootstrapping something in your business, it means that you're doing it yourself. Uh, bootstrapping is really good. It's very cost effective. The only thing it is is time consuming. And when you look at it and you think that uh, bootstrapping is very cost effective for your business. It's not cost effective to you uh, when you think about your time or the time of your employees that you're putting into actually bootstrapping certain aspects of your business. So kind of in general, what can you bootstrap about your business? And the answer is anything. Uh, it could be finances. It could be social media. It could be marketing. It could be sales. Uh, it's finding ways to more effectively get people to know your business, to know your brand and know your products without actually going out and spending a dollar to do so. So for bootstrap marketing, I've came up, come up with five tips that I think you can do um, starting today that will really help you start to build uh, your marketing profile online and kind of expand your reach. And they're all pretty much free and cost effective uh, if you don't count time. So the first thing is building your network. Uh, networking has always been something that is very big for a business. If you can build your network, it's going to introduce you and allow you to meet people um, that can help you bootstrap certain aspects of your marketing. So, for example, with Foodie Crave, um, being a YBI company and being part of the incubator, it really allows us to meet with Jim Costler and tap into different people within that uh, building and within their system that have expertise in certain areas. So, if we need help um, with some maybe type of uh, logistic things with our business, we have somebody that we can meet with down there to do that. If we have, need help with search engine optimization, there's somebody that we can get in contact with. So it helps us build our network. And by doing that, um, we're essentially bootstrapping that. We're not necessarily um, spending a lot of money or time with these people, but we're getting just a little bit of information from them that will really help our business. So by building your own network, and it's about building your network within your industry, you can meet people that may give you one piece of information that you bring back to your business and implement, and then all of a sudden you're seeing a big increase in sales or profits because of it. So bootstrapping is really about thinking deeper uh, than just building a network, going out and shaking hands with people. It's about tapping into them as a resource and saying, okay, how can this person help me? Uh, as I've talked about previously on this pod or on the podcast, I'm not podcasting right now, on this daily live, uh, social media is huge. So for those of you that use social media, that's a really good place that you can grow organically as a business and not actually invest time. I've always talked about the advertising side of social media where you can actually pay to boost a post or you can reach different audiences um, by taking out ads. But if you think about just slow growth, slow organic growth on social media, that has to be done by creating quality content. So if you can create content that really reaches into people's minds and makes them think and it's something that's easily shareable. So we see a lot of these uh, cooking videos on Facebook right now that are coming up in our feeds where it's like a minute long and they cook an entire meal, but it's just a bunch of jump cuts of them actually cooking something. That's something that's easily put together and easily shareable. So people that see that go out and they share it, uh, and that really helps expand that company's profile. It helps them reach more users, more people follow them. So social media is a great place to do that. Also, you can have content contributors. So obviously, Dennis is tapping into people like me uh, and others that do these daily videos as content contributors. So I'm hopefully providing value to you that you can share and comment on and react to that expands Dennis's network with Duo Live. So content contributors are huge and Facebook obviously has made a shift into that with their platform by allowing more people to become content contributors. That's really going to help grow the platform, but it's also going to help grow businesses. So look for people that you can use to either provide information or do things like this live video on your own social networks that will help them uh, obviously grow over time. Doing a podcast, I've seen very good growth in podcasting over time. Um, starting the podcast about a year, uh, April will be a year for me. But over a year, I've grown it to where I know that I have a certain amount of subscribers that listen to it every day, and it's been very slow growth. But from a business aspect, if I can talk about my business or my industry in a format where it's stored somewhere forever, it allows people to discover it. The same with social me media. You're putting pieces of content out there that may not be seen today. This video may not be seen today, but it may be seen three weeks from now by somebody who says, you know what, I decide I want to go to that conference because of it. Go to the DO conference. So you have to think about these things long term. You can't think that you're going to make a podcast or you're going to make a piece of content or a social media post and put it out there 
and all of a sudden a thousand people are going to see that. That's just not the way it works. It's about building all of this content as a foundation that people will eventually discover. So podcasting is a great way to do that. I also think YouTube is a very underutilized platform by businesses. Um, now that we all have cell phones, I've said that we can all produce videos. So those of us that could go in and create a video and post it to YouTube, you're going to create a content piece that's sitting out there. Now, YouTube's owned by Google, so you're going to also find that you're getting some organic search uh, around your industry or product or service or business that people are finding that video, and it's there for them to be discovered. So again, this is part of bootstrapping. It's organic. It's only costing you time and effort of putting it together, but you post it out there and then it lives there. And this can become something that actually helps expand your business. So YouTube's also a great, great platform. I recommend everyone go out and make at least one video, put it out there, and then uh, see how it grows over time. And, and again, be patient with it, and um, you'll see a lot of growth there. The third thing uh, for following along on my five that I'm providing is PR releases to local media. So as a um, startup company, Food Ecrave, the first thing we did was create a PR release that we put out there. And um, doing that and distributing it to the multiple media companies that we have in this area, Cleveland, Pittsburgh markets, uh, immediately we got a response. I mean, within minutes, I had emails coming back that wanted interviews, they wanted questions. We ended up on TV twice because of it. But you can't just do that every time you do something good. You can't just say, hey, you know, we're releasing a new product or we lowered a price here. That's not where PR is effective. What PR wants to do is tell a story about your business. So you also have to think about the long game of any PR communication you put together for your business as part of your marketing strategy. So for Food Ecrave, we're honestly, we're putting something together that was telling people we're launching. We're going live. We're going to be offering this food service, this marketplace. Uh, we're going to be adding local vendors because we were dealing real locally to start. Um, and by doing that, it created some buzz. And we saw a spike right on, off the bat in traffic. Traffic led to customers signing up. They weren't necessarily buying something right away, although we did get a lot of sales that came through because of it. But we got customer emails. And by doing that, then that kind of put them into our number four we're going to talk about, which is email. But it's, it started that funnel process for us. And it also started the story of Foodie Crave. Now, some point this year or multiple times this year, I will probably send out more PR releases about the companies that we're adding, all the vendors that are starting to sign up with us. Uh, I may talk about sales growth. You know, we, I just had an article in the Business Journal this week. Um, it was part of their growth report, but it was just a little snippet about Food Ecrave and what we did for the first four or five months of business. So it's little things like that PR-wise that really, again, don't cost us any money to distribute. It's just us taking the time to write it and send it. Um, that helps with some of the growth. It'll give you little bumps along the way, and those little bumps over time will honestly help your marketing and your strategy go up. So going into number four with email, um, email list is always something that is very important for a business. You have to grow your email list, and you have to grow it organically, and that means, again, growing it slow. Uh, all this week on my daily podcast, I talk about email marketing from branding to strategy and things that you can do to help grow that list and actually put out emails that people want to open and people want to share. The thing about email marketing is, is that over time with slow growth, you can make it very effective for your business model. And the way to do that is to provide quality content, as we always talk about, provide quality content in that email. Give them something, give them a reason to open that email. Uh, e email inboxes today are just like mailboxes were 30 years ago. You know, It's very important that we respect that little line that we have in that email inbox because we're usually, usually getting to an audience that has 50 of those a day that are coming in. And we want to be the part that either stands out or that expectation of what they're going to read when they open up. Uh, depending on what kind of business you are or industry you're in, maybe that email has long form content in it. Maybe there's a lot of text and images in it. Or maybe it's a link to a video. Or maybe it's a one minute read. It depends on what your business provides. It depends on what you're saying each time you send out that email. So part of our process here is looking at email as a whole and saying, how can we make this so it's shareable? How can we make it so each time we come into that inbox, people open it because they want to read what we're saying. They want to listen to what we're saying. Uh, and that's part of your strategy. Doing that well, again, will expand it. If you're not just selling in your email, which I would highly go recommend not doing, don't sell every time you send an email. Every week, you shouldn't be asking people to buy from you because they don't want to buy from you each week. They want to buy from you when they're ready to. So providing content in between allows you to then drop little pieces of buy from us within that. Uh, you may write an entire blog about using a product and you only ask at the end for them to actually buy it. So you give a lot of value on the front end, you ask for that buy on the back end. But doing that is really going to help it and make it so they can send it off to somebody else. Grow that list. So it's all about organic, slow growth when it comes to email.
The last piece is your customer base. Um, you have a customer base that obviously buys from you, likes your service, likes your industry, whatever it is. Use them to your advantage. Let them become brand ambassadors um, for your business. And the best way to do that is to educate them. So if we look back at all of the things that we've talked about in the last couple minutes, um, from building your network to social media to PR releases to emails, those four things allow us to achieve number five. By providing quality content, by providing as much information as we can about who we are as a business, what we sell, what we do, what services we provide, then we're providing the customers with enough information so that if they meet somebody that says, you know, I need this, they're going to say, you know what, you should go to business A. So in the case of Food E-Crave, if someone's like, I'm looking for a gift box to send around the holidays to somebody, or there's a corporate um, you know, buyer that's saying, I want to be able to send something to all of our customers or send something to all of our employees. Someone that bought from Foodie Crave may say, you know what, there's this really cool website called Foodie Crave. They have all different kind of vendors, all different kind of products. They have all different price levels of services that you can send out and boxes that you can send out. And there's gift boxes there. So for us, educating our audience on that allows that person to become my salesperson without them even knowing it. Uh, just giving them as much information that I possibly can is going to help that marketing expand. And it's all bootstrapping. It's all, again, something that I didn't spend a dollar on at this point because I've been doing it all myself and very organically. So, uh, and there was a huge pitch there for Foodie Crave, by the way. So, uh, sorry, not sorry on that part. But that's how you can help bootstrap marketing. So you have to think about those things. And if you organize those correctly and you think long-term, like with the PR piece telling that story, think a long-term of what we're going to do here. Um, to help grow this. At some point, bootstrapping your marketing will help you lead into actually paid marketing. It'll help you grow your business to a point where you start to have a slush fund that you can throw money behind these things. It doesn't mean you're changing how you're building these things. You're still going to do the emails. You're still going to do the Facebook posting. You're still going to do the videos. But what you can do is start to throw money behind them. So beyond subscribers, you're starting to reach an audience that doesn't know about you. And once they find you and discover you because you paid for it, minimally, minimally, uh, you're going to help actually really grow your audience even more then. So doing the organic bootstrapping part of this will actually lead to better quality uh, leads and customer bases and followers and subscribers in the long run because you're going to have a nice foundation of content for them to discover you on. So as always, that was my tip, daily tip here for uh, Do You Live. You can follow me on Twitter at Ross Marone. You can go to uh, my blog, rossmarone.com, and you can follow my uh, podcast, This Is Marketing. Follow me on Instagram at This Is Marketing, too. A lot there at the end there. Uh, Dennis, thanks again for this, and we will see you next week on Wednesday.